Hey everyone, oh, thank you for joining today's webinar on uh, how you can utilize Copilot Studio versus low code, no code. So uh, we can give everyone a few seconds and then we can go ahead and get started. We have some really exciting content, so looking forward to going through some of those content. So you can go ahead and get started. OK, perfect. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today's uh, webinar on Copilot Studio and how you can utilize uh, Copilot Studio and other low code, no code platforms for uh, your business innovation. So uh, let's go ahead and start. So really looking forward to it. So. Um, Three of us will be uh, speaking during today's webinar. Eli and I will be focusing mostly on the low code, no code side of things. And then uh, Vikran, uh, who is data scientist from our team, will be focusing on uh, from a data science perspective and how some of these low code platforms can uh, help accelerate your business and uh, also build these co-pilots. So uh, a quick introduction about myself. So uh, my name is uh, Ajay Ravi and uh, I'm in Chicago like for the past uh, five, six years. So uh, I came to Chicago to pursue my master's in uh, information technology from uh, Illinois Tech and uh, I'm working with concurrency for the past five years. Uh, so uh, I'm a senior systems engineer working mainly on the low code, no code side of things like Dynamics 365, Power Platform, and I worked on a bunch of uh, certifications as well. So uh, really looking forward to this webinar. And let me just pass it over to uh, Eli. Uh, good morning. Uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Eli Rodriguez. Uh, I've been with Concurrency for the last four and a half years, I think, as a systems engineer. Um, I currently reside in a small city in Texas called McAllen. It's very, very, very south. Uh, if you think of San Antonio, you still got to drive three hours south. Uh, I live there with my wife and my two cats, and you know we live a very happy life in in the heat of Texas. I, I deserted from Wisconsin because the cold drove me away. Um, like Ajay, I also uh, specialize on low code uh, solutions for Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. And you know my LinkedIn isn't there. If you want to connect, happy to connect, chat about anything, any questions that you might have around those two topics or anything else. And you can see some of my certifications at the bottom as well. Pleased to meet y'all. Thank you for that, Eli. So Vikram, do you want to quickly introduce? Yeah, sure. Uh, can everyone hear me? By the way, uh, Ajay, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, awesome. So uh, I'm the current. Day, uh, I'm currently at uh, a data scientist at Concurrency since the past year. Uh, focus mainly on data science, AI, ML. I've created a bunch of uh, LLM applications up until now, but uh, yeah, currently in Indiana, Bloomington. You can reach out on LinkedIn if you want to have further conversations on how we build out applications, how we can improve and streamline existing processes. It's a fantastic field. So yeah, a couple of certifications at the bottom as well, but I'll hand it back over to Ajay for now. Thanks, Vikram. Thanks. So uh, before we uh, get started on some of the webinars, so we would like to hear from you uh, and your experience around low code, no code. So uh, if you can take a uh, quick uh, second to kind of like, you know, uh, add this or, or respond to this poll, I think that would be great. We can probably give everyone a few more seconds and then we can go and start. Okay, so thank you for that. So uh, it looks like uh, most of you guys have uh, used some of the different uh, low code, no code, uh, mainly like the power automate side of things, which is really a great tool for automating things, right? So yeah, thank you for that. So uh, before we uh, 
go ahead and start with some of the uh, copilot and the low code no code platforms so just wanted to um, quickly talk about like you know uh, what is development right like so the development uh, concept has changed uh, a lot over the years so traditionally development was always pro code development where you are using complex programming languages to uh, build applications automations and various things but with the introduction of some of those uh, low code as well as the citizen developers so uh, your business users can uh, utilize some of these uh, tools and technologies to innovate uh, and build uh, intelligent solution rather quickly so uh, the go to market is less or uh, it takes less uh, number of resources as well as the cost right so uh, those are some of the great uh, functionalities and features of uh, you know the low code no code right so it will allow you to uh, go to the market uh, rather quickly uh, compared to some of the traditional uh, development tools so uh, a quick uh, overview about some of the challenges which some of the organizations might be facing today. So uh, re regarding the current uh, or the old uh, development, so time to market or uh, some of the business alignment, business and IT alignment, lack of uh, insights or uh, metrics, and then the total cost of ownership are some of the leading uh, challenges which many organizations are facing today right so and in addition to that there might be like a bunch of additional things like for example if it is time to market so there might be hard time and resource constraint or uh, like you might not have the right resources or uh, the it might be an expensive uh, project so uh, you can uh, reduce some of those things using a uh, low code no code approach right like where you can build our uh, intelligent solutions rather quickly which reduces the resource or uh, number of resources the budget and everything and you can also automate a bunch of like you know processes which you are manually uh, managing as well so those are some of the challenges which uh, your organizations might be uh, facing and then when it comes to business and IT alignment, so there might be some governance issues and the changing uh, expectations, right? So, uh, and then when it comes to insights, or uh, there might be less uh, BI integration, or like, or there might be uh, less metrics and everything. So, uh, those might be some additional uh, issues which your organization might be facing, and then there might be some cost of ownership, like legacy systems and everything. So. Using a uh, low code, no code approach, you can utilize a bunch of uh, power platform tools and technologies where you can leverage or like, you know, uh, your business users can leverage to uh, quickly um, design and develop some of these solution. And in addition to that, uh, you can have uh, Power BI for, uh, you know, the metrics and then use robotic process automation for uh, legacy system maintenance and everything, thereby reducing the manual repetitive work. So low code is a great uh, approach which you can use to um, modernize your applications, automations, and also build uh, intelligent copilots with minimal code. <coughs> so what is uh, low code, no code? So uh, it is an alternative to the traditional uh, software development where you are using C Sharp, Java, or like, you know, different programming languages to build um, applications, automations, and various things. So using a uh, copilot, uh, or like the low code, no code, you can uh, kind of like, you know, optimize that and create all those intelligent applications or automations, copilots with minimal or even no code. So even though it is low code, it doesn't mean that you cannot uh, use the pro code functionality. So there are definitely uh, capabilities to do that, but uh, you should be able to uh, build all those uh, applications, automations and copilot uh, with minimal code, and then it would be easy to maintain uh, and enhance as well. So low code uh, gives a great advantage to your citizen developer or the business users, so that way they can uh, help you uh, optimize and build a solution rather quickly and uh, efficiently as they have uh, some business related knowledge as well. So you don't have to be uh, completely reliant on just uh, the IT uh, team. So your uh, business users can also actively help you build uh, all these solutions. So uh, it will kind of like make uh, it a bit more simple uh, without having to use extensive uh, coding. 
So um, Microsoft Power Platform have uh, a bunch of different uh, low code, no code uh, tools. So the one which will be focusing mainly during today's webinar is the Copilot Studio along with some uh, application automation and the website development. Uh, you might have used like the Power BI and uh, some of the reporting purpose, but uh, these are some of the main uh, pillars of which are of, of Power Platform. So you, you, using each of these, you can build intelligent solutions specific to your organization and your our data securely. So Power Platform uh, allows you to kind of like integrate and utilize all these things uh, pretty uh, quickly with less maintenance and then the development time can also go uh, down significantly. So why use uh, low code, no code platforms? So it definitely uh, helps you to reduce uh, the time and cost or uh, it requires to build uh, all these uh, solutions. So uh, rather than the traditional uh, software development project where you require multi years or like many years or months to build. So you can rather uh, build these quickly and then even your business users can utilize and uh, develop these solutions quickly. And you can uh, use the power automate to automate and reduce the error. Uh, of the manual work, so you can use automations uh, like robotic process automation or uh, the cloud flow uh, to automate your various processes as well. And you can uh, kind of like, you know, audit the silos, data silos, and then cost consolidate and improve your business process. So using low code, uh, it will allow you to improve your uh, business processes and then build an intelligent application rather uh, quickly. <coughs> so, before you uh, go ahead and start some of the copilot and some additional power platform thing, so it is important to have your uh, strategy or uh, like the center of excellence strategy so that way you are securing your data. So uh, power platform have all these environments and uh, environments which you can create so that way uh, you have the complete control to uh, authenticate and make sure that uh, you are allowing users to use only the things which your organization wants to uh, allow users to use. So uh, you have the uh, complete uh, ability to do that and you also have the ability to set data loss prevention policy so that way uh, your um, data source or like your uh, connectors are not hitting something or uh, external website or something which you don't want users to access. So um, it allows you to uh, secure your environment. So it's always important to make sure that you have the right uh, center of excellence for uh, securing your environment. And then in addition to that, you can uh, also monitor using monitor how the usage is based on various uh, out of the box or uh, uh, Power BI reports and everything that is already uh, that will already be created when you uh, set up all these uh, environments. And then in addition to that, you can nurture and improve your uh, processes and everything while uh, it is being used actively in production. So you can set up uh, the application lifecycle management and you can easily uh, use uh, the ALM process to deploy and then uh, develop and then uh, you know, uh, utilize in production. So uh, it is really important to have a good uh, center of excellence strategy before utilizing some of the Power Platform tools and technologies. So let's deep dive into uh, our first topic, which is the Copilot Studio. So Microsoft uh, introduced Copilot Studio uh, as part of last year's Ignite, and it is an end-to-end uh, -end conversational AI chatbot that allows you to connect uh, your data source. So you can uh, connect to various data sources, like for example, if you have CRM or uh, if you have an ERP system or uh, if your HR team is using Workday or different uh, applications. So you can uh, connect your Copilot Studio with your uh, custom uh, business data. So you do have the ability to do that and then in addition to that uh, if you want to uh, build your own specific uh, co-pilot based on your industry and department needs so you do have the ability to do that as well and uh, with minimal or uh, no code you can uh, build this co-pilot using graphical interface so when you set up a new co-pilot uh, it automatically comes with some predefined uh, topics and logic so you don't have to build from scratch rather uh, you have a base model and then in addition to that, if you would like to build additional logic, so you can uh, add that using custom logic. So uh, it's a really great tool which you can use to design, test, and publish your copilot for your business needs. So that way, uh, you can your users can utilize the copilot or uh, to chat and or uh, get the necessary information. And uh, 
generative AI capability was something again uh, which uh, Microsoft introduced during uh, last year's Ignite. So uh, you can feed certain documentation, your company policies and HR policy documentation to your uh, co-pilot and it can kind of like uh, return results accordingly. So that way users don't have to go into documentation and browse through everything and get the information. So uh, it's a really uh, cool uh, and a great tool that allows you to uh, utilize and get uh, your uh, personal or like, you know, a company or like specific document related information or from a different uh, application. And uh, in addition to that, uh, there are over 1100 plus plugins and uh, connectors already available in Copilot. So you can utilize those to get uh, information. So for example, if you want to access your ServiceNow uh, knowledge base, so you can utilize uh, Power Automate or some of those uh, pre-existing connectors to get that information and then uh, respond back to the user. So uh, you can use Copilot Studio with uh, zero code to kind of uh, get all that information and uh, a chatbot uh, experience. And here's a quick uh, example of how uh, the chat would look like uh, in the portal. So you do have the ability to kind of like integrate to a public website or uh, in Teams and in all different places as well. Also, uh, a little bit about the architecture. So I know there's a big diagram with a lot of components. So uh, there are uh, various places where you can uh, access uh, your copilot. So uh, you can integrate in Teams, which would be uh, a really uh, easy thing to do. Uh, and we'll do a quick demo as well on how you can uh, utilize copilot um, from your Teams. So um, in addition to that, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Copilot uh, Studio uh, is set up on top of Power Platform environment. So you do have the ability to kind of like set uh, the tenant level of security things and then block and restrict certain things if you don't want users to access that. So you do have the ability to do that. Uh, and then you can also use Azure Active Directory to um, access and log in or single sign on to uh, access the board. So uh, there are uh, a lot of these capabilities already uh, in build. And uh, Copilot uh, uses the Azure bot service uh, in order to kind of like interact with the user. So when you uh, set up a Copilot Studio, also uh, uh, it automatically comes with some uh, pre-built entities. So entities are basically uh, how the bot can uh, understand what users are talking about. So uh, you know it already comes with some how certain entities like you know age or number and all those things. So uh, it already comes with that. But in addition to that, if you would like to add any custom entities, so you you do have the ability to do that as well without any code. And then all generative answer functionality, like I mentioned, so it was introduced back in uh, during the last year's Ignite, and you do have the ability to disable that as well if you don't want to like use generative AI capability, and instead you can purely uh, drive the conversation based on how you design. So that is also uh, a functionality, but if you're using generative answer, you can uh, kind of like, you know, feed different documentation, SharePoint, external websites and everything, and the bot would be able to kind of like uh, interact and provide the necessary results with all the citation and all the details. And um, at any point of time, uh, if you want to like escalate to an actual live agent, so you do have the ability to do that as well. So you can uh, escalate to a uh, service now or like, you know, Dynamics 365 customer service and the agent will be able to uh, see all the backend conversation. So it's a really uh, great way to kind of like, you know, uh, talk with the uh, board and then uh, transfer to a live agent as needed as well. And you have the data loss prevention policies and everything. Uh, so uh, you can also uh, use the Copilot Studio to kind of like, you know, implement in one environment and then deploy to higher environments. So uh, it would be a great uh, opportunity to kind of like, you know, uh, start a Copilot and then you can continuously improve while uh, it is being uh, tested and used in different environment. So a little bit about how the generative uh, answer and the process works. So like I mentioned, so you do have the ability to disable the generative AI uh, functionality, but if you uh, turn that functionality on in the copilot, so uh, the bot can kind of like, you know, uh, based on what you type. So in query rewriting approach will be used to kind of like uh, understand and pick the keywords based on what you have typed. And then it will look at some of the data sources which you have connected to uh, respond appropriately so uh, in this 
example. So uh, you can uh, kind of like connect your uh, copilot to a uh, public data sites or like you know public websites. So currently up to four uh, websites are uh, supported uh, in copilot. So you can uh, connect up to four uh, public website. And if you would like to connect your internal SharePoint location, so you can do that as well uh, by connecting your uh, SharePoint uh, website. And uh, if you have uh, a custom OpenAI model on your data, so you can definitely connect your copilot with uh, OpenAI to uh, kind of like you know uh, interact. And um, in addition to that, all the additional features are you can upload documents. So it can be a plain uh, PDF or Word or any uh, Word related documents. So you can upload those documents to uh, the copilot and then the generative AI functionality will be able to read and provide those uh, results to the user. So and then again, uh, if you want to access a custom data like uh, a different application like all service now or a different one, so you do have the ability to use our cloud flows connectors or even HTTP calls to get some of those information. So this way, uh, generative answers uh, can be like retrieved from uh, various data sources. So I'm just going to uh, hand over to uh, Vikrant to talk a little bit about uh, his uh, from a data science uh, perspective of Copilot and how uh, Copilot Studio can benefit uh, some of those things. Yeah, thanks, Ajay. Yeah, so uh, like I said, here at Concurrency as part of the data science team, we've worked on quite a few LLM-based applications, one of which was an intra-organizational Copilot or chatbot. Actually, a multiple set of projects were about chatbots, but Overall, we have built out these chatbots or in Microsoft terms, co-pilots that can help you do like multiple things, right? One could be getting answer from your around about 100 corporate documents or getting your order status or customer latest order specific information from an ERP. You could even use it for like ideation or like creation of uh, content improvement. So the use cases range from just accessing your data sources over into generating content and making stuff better as you go along. Yeah, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so now uh, over to uh, approaches for how do we create out these co-pilots? So um, there's four different ways the way I see it. One could be use uh, existing open source frameworks out there like Langchain or Llama Index, which essentially involve you writing out your own router. And whenever a user query comes in, you're going to have, let's say, 10 different flows that you want to execute, but everything is written out in code. So you have explicit control over your entire chatbot's functionality. Uh, the same way Semantic Kernel or Autogen, these are kind of frameworks from Microsoft itself where you have agent-based decision-making. So essentially at the back end, an LLM or like some intelligence is responsible for creating out a plan and then thereby whenever user prompts or uh, provides a query, the agent itself decides, hey, uh, this is the intent that I think the user is asking for. These are like the five to six different steps that I need to execute. So this is more autonomous as compared to like you having full control over what your application is built out for. Um, along the same lines, Copilot Studio is like a GUI based tool, uh, which we'll see uh, in a minute. But what this is doing is it's abstracting out your uh, requirement for writing out code or like doing stuff very manually. So uh, rather than you having to fine tune every aspect in much more granular detail, it's a very quick way of going to market and having your chatbot or copilot ready for users to use. So again, Copilot Studio uh, uses this concept called topics, which are essentially flows that you configure in UI itself. So it's a very easy and intuitive way for building out your own chatbot or copilot. But yeah, we'll take a look at this in a minute. Um, Ajay, can you move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. Yeah, so now for a look under the powerful hood for Copilot Studio. So if uh, I'm just going to be walking through the screen, it's fairly intuitive, but uh, in the nav pane on your left, you're going to see copilots, which are essentially chatbots that you've deployed on, let's say, Teams or Office 365 applications or wherever you choose to deploy these copilots. Um, but then each copilot will be associated to an overview. That's obvious because you don't want people to get confused. You're going to have, let's say, 10 to 20 different topics for each copilot. So again, these topics are nothing but flows that you want to uh, configure or have your chatbot execute in the back end without your users having to worry about stuff. 
but overall you have uh, analytics at your fingertips to show which are your most active users is there some downtime mm. so most of the analytics that you would think revolve around the chatbot you're going to have at your fingertips through copilot studio in the ui itself publishing these chatbots again there's off the shelf options that you can just deploy and test across environments like ajay mentioned so like dev test prod but moving on to the right side of this entire screen the, the testing window we've already covered it's going to be a live environment where you let's say configured a specific route or like a flow you could immediately uh, test it in your ui itself so that's like a very quick way of um, having this development sped up for you along the same lines the topics are basically how you configure a flow and i'll show you something uh, neat in the next slide but each topic is essentially one of the flows that your chatbot is going to execute when the user actually gives it a specific prompt. So all of these topics can be configured and you're going to have trigger words that should be monitored whenever a user actually sends in a prompt. So yeah, next slide please. Ajay. So now uh, coming to the meat of this entire chatbot, uh, we've just clicked on this topic or like a flow, which is which we've named as conversational boosting. So all of that said, we're just going to have like, let's say 10 to 20 different steps that you want your chatbot to execute when there's some, some specific trigger words or some specific keywords that it sees across. So it's essentially doing intent detection or like routing under the hood. But if you can understand, like this is a very powerful way of doing intent detection because you're going to have a very intuitive layout for just doing like 10 different things, right? So in Microsoft's terminology, uh, a topic or a route would be an explicit flow of actions to perform based on an incoming user prompt. Um, what I mentioned earlier, which was for the semantic kernel and autogen, where there is an autonomous agent doing the decision making for you. That is basically an AI based flow that helps you do the same thing that you configure explicitly over here. So this is a way that you can have more control over the user experience that you're giving to your, let's say, 100 or 1,000 different users. But again, all of that is to say both can do the same thing. It's just the use cases uh, could be like sending out emails, retrieving information from your database, um, asking for help, clarifying questions, um, retrieving or saving memories from previous conversations. All of that is a bit more easier to do through the UI, if you can imagine that, like a highly maintainable way of improving or just fine tuning your chatbots functionality across, let's say multiple environments or like multiple device uh, softwares. So yeah, I think uh, that's very powerful in my opinion from a Copilot Studio standpoint. Yeah, I'll hand it over back to Ajay for now. Thanks Vikram for all your quick uh, insight from your perspective. So thank you for that. And uh, let's take a quick look at some of the common uh, use cases where you can use copilot so uh, you can use uh, in your various business right like for example b2e b2b or b2c so you can use on different uh, industry or like you know businesses depending on your use case so for example if you want to build an internal uh, id chatbot where you can use uh, copilot to open tickets or uh, get status for an accessing ticket or even access knowledge base so you can totally do that using copilot and human resource team they can uh, use copilot which is integrated to all suppose uh, work days to kind of like onboard a new user so that could be an another great use case where you can use copilot and the front line workers and the legal and compliance so they can use copilot to uh, get some insights about certain documentation or like you know uh, getting uh, details around a certain uh, stuff so you can totally do that uh, using copilot and in addition to that, uh, you can also use in your B2B or B2C where uh, the project management team, they can kind of like, you know, use Copilot to get uh, insights around the project or like, you know, supply manager can get uh, the status of uh, an order and like for B2C. So you can use for customer support or like, you know, assisting with the traveling. So all these are some of great use cases to Copilot and you can build all these use cases without any uh, code or using uh, Copilot and the power platform tools and technologies. So uh, 
few uh, examples. Just wanted to walk you through a few examples before we look into uh, one live demo. So in this uh, scenario, so uh, I have integrated the copilot with our uh, service now. So you can see that it's an internal ID or uh, help desk chatbot. So using few, uh, you know, uh, normal interactions. So you can uh, pretty much uh, provide the details or regarding your issue and then open a new uh, service now ticket and get the ticket number as well. So uh, user don't have to uh, open a different portal or anything. They can directly use in Teams or like, you know, um, public website where they have integrated all the, you know, copilot and then you can utilize that for uh, opening new uh, tickets. Another common uh, example would be so if you want to access an existing service now knowledge base, so you can do that as well. So in the scenario, uh, I just type like what's a cookie. Also, it pretty much looked at the knowledge base and then provided uh, the results uh, from the knowledge base along with some uh, URLs. So this is another example. And you can also use uh, Copilot to create new purchase order in your CRM or like, you know, various ERP applications. So uh, I can just type something like create purchase order or, and then provide a few additional information and that will uh, allow you to uh, create a new uh, ticket uh, or like, you know, new purchase order in CRM application. So this is another uh, great use case. Uh, Another one would be how to get generative answers based on your SharePoint or uh, your internal documentation which you have provided. So in the scenario, you can see I have added a couple of documentation and the bot would kind of uh, use some of these documentation and internal website to uh, get some of those information. So like for example, uh, how early should I get approvals for uh, international traveling? So you can see that uh, it pretty much looked at the documentation and provided that result. So uh, using a uh, low code, no code approach, so you can uh, get some of these generative answers using Copilot. So before uh, we do a quick live demo, so uh, what we have done here is we have built an internal uh, copilot. So we have integrated that to service now, Dynamics 365, SharePoint, and <coughs> and also an external website. So uh, copilot should be uh, able to understand and then accordingly, uh, you know, uh, open new ticket or like access knowledge base. And uh, if you want to open a new uh, order requests in Dynamics, you can do that as well and uh, it can also respond back based on like some AI answers and then also even access external website. So uh, you can uh, kind of like integrate your board uh, into multiple uh, different uh, data sources and then accordingly get some of those results as well. So I'm just going to share my screen real quick and walk you through some of those things. So uh, this is a uh, Copilot Studio uh, portal. So by default, uh, you can see uh, that this is the base message which our uh, users will get when uh, they come and they can access Copilot either in the portal or uh, external website or even in Teams. So we'll be going over the Teams in a bit. Uh, but if you go to the generative AI, so you can see that I've uh, kind of like linked multiple uh, websites and then added few documentation as well. So these are some of the data sources which I've provided and in addition to that, I have specific topics to kind of like, you know, uh, navigate how through some of those conversations. So I'm just going to type something real quick. So if I type hi, uh, it will pretty much uh, uh, respond by, and I'm just going to type a quick uh, question. So I'm just going to type where can, where can I find the reimbursement app URL? So uh, we have added some of the documentations to uh, the SharePoint side as well as some of the documentation here. So you can see that uh, it pretty much responded uh, with URL and documentation. And when you click on this citation, it will even uh, download the travel and expense policy. So uh, all I have done is we have integrated and connected some of the documentations uh, to the copilot and SharePoint, and it pretty much looks at uh, those documentations and provide the appropriate uh, results. So if I type something like uh, how early should I get our uh, approval? Oh, for international traveling again, oh, this is uh, a separate uh, topic which we have designed. So it will uh, look at some of those uh, documentation and then provide the results. So you can see that uh, it responded that you should uh, get the authorization at least 15 uh, days before the plan. Uh, and when you click on the citation, so you can see the specific uh, information related to uh, what the board is talking about as well. 
And another quick use case, how if I want to open a new uh, ticket, also I'm just going to refresh this real quick so that you can see that clearly. So uh, if I want to open uh, a new uh, ticket in Dynamics 365, like for a purchase order, so um, I want to place a PO. So uh, it pretty much uh, asks some additional information. So uh, I'm just going to provide my And I'm just going to uh, confirm which device. So uh, it will pretty much uh, trigger a backend automation and it will uh, place an order and then uh, it will provide the results. So if I go to uh, Dynamics 365 and if I refresh, so you can see uh, this is the one which I created just now. So you can uh, pretty easily connect your copilot with your uh, you know, different data sources. Uh, to kind of like interact and uh, connect multiple data sources for various activities. And one quick thing before we check. So, and uh, there's also an easy way to kind of uh, integrate your copilot with Teams so that way you don't have to open any portal or website. So you can use uh, the concurrent, you can use Teams to kind of like integrate and then accordingly uh, converse. So I uh, pretty much type, I want to open a new ticket and uh, it will pretty much uh, ask for a couple of information and then provide uh, the results as well. And then, um, you know, open a ticket on your behalf. So these are pretty uh, quick and easy thing which you can do directly from uh, Copilot Studio. So uh, those were uh, some of the things related to the Copilot Studio. Uh, and in addition to Copilot Studio uh, and the Copilots available in Power Platform and Microsoft. Uh, so there are additional things which you can do. Uh, and uh, one other great tool would be like the Power App, which you can use for low-code application development. So there are various uh, advantages of low-code application development uh, as it will help you build uh, intelligent application relatively quicker with reduced uh, cost. And then you do have the ability to integrate with our various third party or like different system as well. So uh, Power App or low code uh, app development is a great tool uh, where you can kind of like build uh, applications without any code uh, or like, in, you know, the traditional software development uh, methodology. So it's a great tool uh, where you can build uh, applications relatively quicker. And uh, there are a couple of different types of uh, Power Apps. So the first one is a Canvas application. So uh, Canvas app uh, gives you the complete uh, control to build your uh, UI. So based on your requirements and the screen navigation and all the functionalities. So you can build those uh, Power App uh, and you can uh, build for your uh, web or even for a mobile application. So without any code uh, or using uh, Power FX function, so you should be able to build uh, a Canvas application from scratch and you can uh, kind of like integrate to various uh, uh, critical things like, you know, uh, if you want to like uh, integrate a camera or like, you know, uh, or even use image detection or like image uh, processing. So you can definitely uh, do that as well using uh, a Canvas application. So it is a really uh, quick and easy way where you can uh, build uh, a Power App or like, you know, application without uh, much code or like less code. And another quick thing which you can do uh, using Power App is a model driven app. So this one, uh, you don't have to build out the screen by screen. So instead, when you uh, set up a new uh, application of uh, the Microsoft Power Platform will automatically create a model driven application along with the navigation and everything by default. So you don't have to uh, design everything also uh, it does come with a little bit less UI control, uh, but uh, this is another thing which you can use to uh, build your application relatively quicker uh, with less code or like even no code. And there are a lot of uh, copilot functionalities available. So uh, with minimal or like plain English, you can start, uh, you know, application development. You can see in the scenario, I just type, I want an app that can track AI ideas. So it pretty much uh, created some uh, backend tables and you, by clicking on create app, it will uh, create a base app. And from there you can capitalize and then build the additional logic that you need specifically for your business. So that way you don't have to build or start everything from scratch. And uh, this is uh, a latest uh, 
functionality that was available originally. So you can see that uh, there are Copilot functionalities inside Canvas applications. So you can use the Copilot to uh, ask and explain the formula that you have written. So that would be a great way uh, for the users to kind of like, you know, see and uh, understand the code uh, in a bit more in detail. And here's a quick uh, example where uh, we have used uh, and uh, image to kind of like process and get some of the details. So this is a quick form where we user can kind of like, you know, create expense report, how to create the report and then uh, use an uh, receipt to upload the image and then submit and that would kind of like trigger automation and all those different uh, areas. So uh, Power Platform is a great uh, way you can kind of like uh, interact with different uh, areas like apps or uh, automations or uh, websites and everything. So uh, it would be really, uh, cool thing to kind of like you know integrate and relatively quicker with all low or minimal code so i'm just going to uh, hand it over to eli who will be talking a little bit about uh, the power automate and the power pages side of things and we'll be walking you through a quick demo as well thank you can you hear me yep okay cool uh, let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Thank you so much for the introduction. Yep. All right. So let's talk about real quick about what these other features from uh, the Power Platform are, are about. So let's start with Power Automate. So Power Automate is uh, one of the Microsoft tools that is designed specifically to help with the automation of workflows and repetitive tasks, which you know turns into an increase of efficiency and productivity within your organization. Uh, the really nice thing about Power Automate is you can create all these automations without necessarily writing any any code or without really needing extensive coding knowledge. Uh, Power Automate also counts with uh, very nice uh, integration features. It seamlessly integrates with uh, various Microsoft and third-party applications, such like Office 365, Dynamics 365, SharePoint, Teams, even Salesforce, and uh, many more. We do have two different types of uh, flows for Power Automate. So we have cloud flows, which are created and executed entirely in the cloud. Uh, they can automate tasks across various cloud-based applications and services without requiring any sort of like on-prem infrastructure. So these are very suitable to automate processes that involve online services. Then you also have your desktop flows. So these are designed to automate tasks within a desktop application. So they will make, make user interactions such as like keystrokes, clicks, you know, windows, et cetera, and, and enable the automation of these repetitive tasks uh, across the Windows-based applications, uh, which are very useful to automate legacy or non-cloud app, uh, applications where APIs or connectors are not available within, you know, the, the Microsoft stack. It also provides uh, comprehensive monitoring options. So it allows your users to track the performance and the status of the flows in real time uh, through dashboards, notifications, and even uh, data logs. So Power Automate also counts with uh, Copilot. So Copilot for Power Automate is allowing citizen developers to build workflows through the usage of simple language prompts. So a user can simply just type a requirement in Copilot and the Copilot will build out that workflow for them. Then users are gonna be able to just interrupt with Copilot to make the changes that they need in each one of the actions of their Power Automate. And then this will enhance the decision-making when you're developing a solution. So creating flows became just much easier with Copilot. Another nice tool uh, from the Microsoft Saga is Power Pages. Uh, so Power Pages allows users to create custom, interactive, and responsive web pages within a Power, Power Apps environment. It seamlessly integrates with other Power Platform components like uh, your Power Apps, Power BI. Uh, it also can connect to different data sources such as Dataverse, SharePoint List, Excel tables, SQL tables, Power BI datasets, and many more. It definitely enables citizen developers to build uh, custom web pages with uh, drag and drop interfaces, very interactive components, pre-built templates, and dynamic data visualization. So this fosters the innovation and the agility within an organization to spin up websites. So in addition to having a low code development capability, 
Power Pages also provides functionalities for those that are still pro developers. So it allows you to perform custom scripting to implement advanced functionality and logic that is beyond the capabilities of the visual designer. It allows you to brand your website by providing custom styling and theming. And it also allows you for uh, advanced data manipulation. It also counts with uh, API integration to connect to any of your external services and data sources. Power Pages also counts with Copilot. So Copilot uh, in Power Pages will offer an AI-based assistance for users uh, that will provide suggestions, code snippets, even create components for the users by just, again, just using natural language commands. So this will assist developers or citizen developers into writing code or building websites more efficiently and accurately by offering contextual, contextual suggestions and automating all these repetitive tasks. So now that we talked about a lot of the components from um, the Microsoft stack, so this is just a very condensed and simplified image of how the Power Platform is working with other components that are built on that Azure architecture. So it can extend the customization of your Dynamics 365 environments and applications. It can also work with a lot of data sources like Dataverse, SharePoint, SQL Server, Azure DVs, external data sources, and so many more. It also allows for custom development for those uh, pro developers through the uses of app services, functions, web APIs, SDKs, and many other options. And it also it natively integrates with uh, the Microsoft 365 stack, so your Office, your Teams, and your SharePoint. So we're going to go ahead and cover three very small straightforward demos to just showcase how all these pieces work together. Uh, so with the first part that we're going to cover is just a straight submission in a Power Page that creates a record in Dataverse, and Power Automate is going to be able to pick up that uh, creation of a record and inform us that there was a record created in our environment. The second demo that we're going to go through is going to be a Canvas app where users submit requests for uh, conference attendance. Power Automate then picks up this creation of a record. It generates an approval, waits for that approval response, and then writes back into uh, the SharePoint list with the result of that approval. And then the last one that we're going to cover is going to be a desktop flow that it's executing a uh, Windows application by reading a simple invoice from a PDF file, gets the information from that PDF file, opens the application, puts in the information, and commits it to the database. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, my other screen. <clears throat> Just one second. And you see my screen? Not yet. Not. OK, here you go. All right. So the first one that we were going to cover was we we're going to have a submission on a Power Pages uh, web page. So you can see here that I spun up this Power Page. Uh, again, was used without any, any specific coding um, languages. It was a template that was provided for us, which is really neat. So if I go ahead into the Contact Us page, it'll take me to a form where I can go ahead and submit my information. So I'm going to go ahead and put this information real quick. I'm going to go ahead and submit this form. Now that the form is submitted, the record has been created in Dataverse. So the Power Automate has picked up that creation. And if I go to my team uh, and I show you my my chat here, you'll see that, hey, oh, here you go. Hey, a new contact request has been submitted. Eli Rodriguez, he, he would like to know more. And that's one of the, the neat things that we can do with uh, Power Automate. The next one, the next demo is going to be a simple Canvas app that is connected to a SharePoint list where I'm able to log requests to, to attend conferences. 
So I'm going to go ahead and fill out my information here. I'm going to submit a request for myself. Let's call it a, a very short weekend real quick here. Uh, I'm going to fly with Southwest and I'm going to spend $250 on it. My lodging is going to be 180 and my reason to travel is a great opportunity to net work with other field professionals. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this request. Now that the request has been submitted, Power Automate will pick up the creation of this item list and it'll send an approval to the manager, which in this case, it's conveniently me. I'm my own manager right now. So if we come here into my email, you'll see that a new conference request has been created. And you can see the details of what we inputted here, the requester, all the other fields that I had in my, in my Canvas app, and um, the reason for the request. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and approve it and say, this is okay. Please go ahead with the booking of this trip. I'm gonna go ahead and submit. Now that this approve has been set, Power Automate will pick it up and uh, update the SharePoint list accordingly and send a notification. While we wait for that notification, I'm gonna show you guys how Power Automate Desktop is capable of performing UI tasks within a desktop application. So again, this Power Automate will go ahead and open this invoice. You can see it's just a very standard, simple invoice. It'll read the invoice, get the data that I need from it through rejects, and then uh, open my desktop application because we're not fully cloud at concurrency medical supplies, and then input that data into my desktop application. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Let's just give me one minute. It might be shy. You see it opened my custom desktop application and it'll start inputting data in just one second. My hands are right here, by the way, I'm not doing anything. It click save, close this, and it's done. Again, I it was there was no interaction for me whatsoever. This was built by just um, inputting all my keystrokes and my clicks while recording the actions that I needed this Power Automate to perform. So let's go ahead and check if my approval has come through. Oh, what do you know? My request was approved by me. So we get the details of the approval, uh, who approved it, what was the outcome of the approval, and the comments. Obviously, these are very simplified use cases of the things that you can do with um, all these Power Platform tools. You can customize them to your liking, build upon them, simplify them, and that's the beauty of the Power Platform. You can create exactly what you need that fulfills your business needs. I'm gonna go ahead and change to my presentation again. Just one second have too many windows open. Uh, where's my share? Here it is. Are you able to see my screen now? Yep. I believe so. Go, cool, go. Cool. Thank you, Ajay. So let's move forward with Okay, so what of what of creating all these things mean? How do I know that they're working? So things, ways to to measure uh, success within your organization. You know, it's not a just A B C type of thing. There's different ways that your organization can perform to be measuring your success. You know, depending on the goals and the objectives of the application that you're building. The most common one ones would be you know user adoption. 
So you can measure the number of unique logins, the number of active sessions or engagement metrics within the app. If it's applicable, you can measure the integration success. So you can evaluate how well the Power Apps is integrated with other systems, other data sources within the organization, because you know a smooth integration can definitely lead into an increased efficiency and better decision making. Another very important one would be compliance and governance. So you can assess whether the Power Apps is compliant with uh, your requirements at our organizational level. Uh, it's very special, you know, there are industries that have very strict compliance standards like insurance or healthcare. Another thing that you can check is the performance of the app. So you can check how it's performing as the demand of it grows. So you can have monitoring factors like the response time, the uptime, and its ability to handle amounts of data and users that increase as time progresses. Time and cost savings. So you can measure the time that is saved by using the, your Power App solution, uh, comparing it to the previous manual or paper-based processes. Uh, you can also calculate the cost savings achieved by uh, streamlining your processes or reducing the need for manual innovation by uh, including your savings in labor cost, printing cost, or any other, other overhead expenses. All of this can be transformed into, well, what is my return on investment, right? So you can use any of these far factors to calculate the return on investment. And again, it truly really depends on the goals and the objectives of your project or application. Now I'm gonna send it back to Ajay for uh, some final slides. Thank you for your time. If you can go to the next slide, please, Eli. Oh, I can, my bad. Just sharing real quick. I think I got the wrong screen. There you go. No, if you can, yeah. Thank you for that. So just wanted to like quickly mm -hmm. uh, give an overview around like, you know, Copilot and AI features. So uh, like now we talked about our Copilot Studio, how you can build intelligent chatbot. And in addition to that, you do have the ability to use Copilot for M365 as well, right? For improving uh, your day-to-day -day productivity. And uh, you also have the ability to use uh, Copilot inside all the business app and our uh, platforms. Like for example, you can use uh, Copilot for sales for your sales team, which will kind of like optimize and then get more uh, sales related information. And uh, you can use Copilot for service for your um, customer service application, like the Dynamics 365 or customer service to kind of like, you know, optimize and get more uh, insights there. So there are a lot of Copilot uh, functionalities available in uh, business apps as well as power platform that will uh, hugely benefit uh, the users to kind of like increase the productivity and you can also build your custom copilot or uh, using uh, azure open ai as well if you can go to the next one so uh, a call to action for like you know all that needs so uh, having a great uh, you know, envisioning session uh, to kind of like, you know, go over what is possible, what is not possible would be a great uh, next step along with some uh, scenario evaluation. So that way you can kind of like understand what are some of the capabilities uh, of all these uh, co-pilots along with the power platform. And then, you know, uh, gradually uh, scaling that usage and utilize for various business operation can hugely benefit uh, the organization to improve the productivity and also enable the citizen development or concept as well. So if you can go to the next one, Eli. So um, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you could take a quick second to uh, submit uh, the survey uh, and then let us know uh, if you would like to uh, have one of these uh, workshop or you know, uh, all, so that would be great. So uh, we really appreciate uh, everyone's time on this webinar. Any questions, thoughts? So feel free to like uh, post it in the chat and we'll be more than happy to uh, answer. I think we'll go ahead and um, as we can, rec we will be providing the recording of the session. And if you have any other questions, you can go ahead and put it in the survey. Um, thank you everybody for coming and um, we'll be following up with the recording and the slides. Take care. Thanks awesome. everyone. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone. Have a good rest of your day, guys.